Intimate Promise, a Reflection for the Fifth Sunday of Easter. Let's imagine the final days of the first missionary journey as Paul and his companion, Barnabas, swing back to reinforce earlier visits before taking ship to Antioch. Such long-distance travel would have been unusual for the time. Merchants moved about, but most people stayed close to home, within the boundaries of extended family or village, finding there all they needed for daily life. If one traveled, one did not do so alone. Solitary travelers made easy targets for bandits and wild beasts. For safety, Paul needed Barnabas and others as traveling companions. They probably walked, aided by a staff in difficult terrain. A strong and even-tempered donkey to carry supplies would have been a welcome addition. Moving by day to avoid the risk of ambush, though resting for a time in the midday heat, they likely carried dried fruit, bread, and water to last about two days. Roads were somewhat scarce and often hard to recognize, but the Persians, pioneers of Middle Eastern road construction, had begun a network of connectors between present-day Turkey and Iran. Some of these roads would have been known to Paul since maps of the time show them crossing near his home city of Tarsus. Paul and Barnabas made their roundabout return journey to encourage the fledgling communities they had previously founded. This encouragement took the form of a kind of tough love message. It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships. Translation, we never said it would be easy. We can easily imagine the concern of these two evangelists as they strengthened the spirit of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in faith, all the while knowing that they themselves could not stay to maintain that spirit or faith. They had to entrust the ongoing life and growth of the communities to elders, not exotic imports, but respected locals chosen from among the people, commending both the elders and the people to the Lord. Remember the final words of Jesus spoken from the cross in St. Luke's account of the Passion, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In that case, commend means complete and utter trust, with no holding back or hedging of bets. At the point of death, Jesus places himself in the care of the one who has been with him, closer than breath, all through his life. Here, the same evangelist, Luke, author of both the Gospel and Acts, uses the word to indicate the profound trust of Paul and Barnabas in the ongoing presence of the risen Lord. They place the fledgling communities in the care of the Holy Spirit, who can be trusted to supply the grace and gifts needed to sustain their vitality. Today's second reading offers reassurance as the voice from the throne speaks a promise that we all need to remember. Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will always be with them as their God. We live in the wake of this intimate promise. God's Holy Spirit lives within each of us and moves within us, between us, among us, and through us, always outward to heal the world. The one God makes all things new, and we are meant to serve God's purpose and Christ's mission. 
with the guidance and energy of the Spirit. Jesus' parting words from today's Gospel point the way. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Let's be honest. How well do we love one another? As Catholics, as Christians, as people of faith, as people made in God's image. Hmm. Come Holy Spirit.